All right, trig equations. You haven't memorized the unit circle. <laughs> Inconceivable. Um, pull out your unit circle if you have it, okay? Thanks. So let's look at the unit circle for a second. So give the solutions to the equation sine of x equals one half. Remember, sine is our y value. So we're just looking for where does the y value equal one half? Well, it's those two places. So on the interval from zero to two pi, that's going to be pi six and five pi six. Okay, but what if it's on the interval from negative infinity to infinity? So we could go around the circle as many times as we want. Well, that means, so here was our pi six. If I go around two pi, I'm going to add two pi. There's another one that's there. Add another two pi, add another two pi, add another two pi. And I could just keep doing this forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever, right? Because infinity is crazy. Okay, so then what if I went backwards? I could also go backwards, right, from that angle. I could go here and here and here and here and here. So that means there's really infinite places where sine of x equals one half. So it's going to be pi half or pi six plus or minus two pi because that will be a whole rotation. And 5 pi 6 plus or minus 2 pi. And they're both multiplied by n, where n is just an integer. So it would be like however many times I rotated. So I could say n is 100. And that means that I went from pi 6, I rotated 100 times and just got to whatever that angle was. Okay? All right. So we're going to stick to finite intervals, though. So we're not going to mess with infinity. So if I have 3 tangent of A equals tangent of A minus 2, and I want to solve for A. Well, let's look at this equation. I want to get tangent of A by itself. So I'm going to first combine my tangents of A. So I subtracted that tangent of A to the left to get 2 tangent of A equals negative 2. Then I can divide by 2, and I get tangent of A equals negative 1 half. Well, remember that, whoops, tangent is y divided by x. So I need to look at where my y and my x values are the same. So that's going to be all the pi fourths intervals. So they're all the same right there. But the only time I'm going to get a negative is in the second and the fourth quadrant. And it's on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So this is going to be 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. Cool. Boom shakalaka. <laughs> okay, so then this one. So we have 4 sine squared of u plus 8 equals 11. And this is on the interval from pi to 3 pi half. So it's just between those two right there. Okay, so then if I have 4 sine squared of u plus 8 equals 11, subtract the 8, you get 4 sine squared of u equals 3. Divide by 4, you get sine squared of u equals 3 fourths. Square root that and you get the square root of 3 fourths plus or minus which is the square root of 3 over the square root of 4 which is the square root of 3 over 2. So we want to know where sine of u equals the square root of 3 over 2 plus or it could be positive or negative and sine is the y value so that's going to be at 4 pi thirds. So that means u equals 4 pi thirds. And that's the only one it equals because we were restricted on our interval. Okay? Yes. <laughs> okay, so this one. Cotangent of x equals cotangent of x times sine squared of x on the interval from pi to 2 pi. So it's everything below the x-axis. Okay, so then if I have cotangent of x equals cotangent of x times sine of x, I want to move everything to one side. So I'm going to subtract that over, and I get cotangent of x minus cotangent of x sine squared of x. Well, then I look at what do they both have in common. They both have this cotangent of x in common, so I can divide by the cotangent of x here. Okay, so if I divide the, by that, I get cotangent of x equals or times 1 minus sine squared of x. Pythagoras comes back. He always comes back. 1 minus sine squared of x is cosine squared of x. So then I have cotangent of x equals 0 and cosine squared of x equals 0. So cotangent of x equals 0. Well, oh, in the right, that's really if I square root both sides, the square root of 0 is just 0. 
So where cotangent of x equals 0, well, cotangent is x over y. If you remember from stuff we were doing last unit. And we want to figure out where x over y equals 0. So it's going to be one of these endpoints. But at pi and 2 pi, it's undefined. And at 3 pi halves, it is 0. So that's going to just be at 3 pi halves. And same for cosine. That's the only place that cosine equals 0 is also at 3 pi halves. So our answer here is that x equals 3 pi halves. Cool. All right, so this one, we have 2 sine squared of alpha plus 3 sine of alpha minus 2 equals 0 on the interval from 0 to 2 pi, so the entire circle here. Well, we're going to let x equal sine of a. So this is a thing in calculus that they like to refer to as um, u substitution, and you'll use it a lot when you're doing integrals. So this is just kind of like a precursor to that, I guess. But if we're going to let x equal sine of a, that will make this equation look not so ugly. So then we have 2x squared plus 3x minus 2 equals 0. And then um, factoring it. So I have to see what multiplies <laughs> what multiplies to be negative 4 and adds to 3. Well, it's 4 negative 1. We can go through and factor it, and you're going to end up with x plus 2 and 2x minus 1. Hopefully you remember factoring. <laughs> okay, so then we said x plus 2 equal to 0. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Back up, back up, back up. So I'm going to plug sine of a back in. So I have sine of alpha plus 2 equals 2, or times 2 sine of alpha minus 1. So that equals 0. Both of those equal 0. So that means sine of alpha equals negative 2, which there is nowhere on this circle that sine equals negative 2. There's no y value here that equals negative 2. Our radius is only 1, so we would have to double our circle here. And this little 0 with a line through it means no solution. Okay. So then here I can add the 1, divide by 2, and I get sine of alpha equals 1 half. So I want to figure out where's my y value 1 half. Well, it's in those two places. So this is going to be alpha equals pi 6 and 5 pi 6. Cool. Okay, let's do this one. So we have secant to the fourth of x minus 4 secant squared of x plus 3 equals secant squared of x minus 1 on the interval from pi to 2 pi. So it's everything below the x-axis. So then here, I'm going to move everything over to one side. So I'm going to subtract the secant squared, and I'm going to add the 1. So I get secant to the fourth of x minus 5 secant of x plus 4 equals 0. I'm going to let u equal secant squared of x. So if I plug that into that first one, well, secant squared times secant squared is secant to the fourth. So that just becomes u squared. And then minus 5u plus 4, which factors to u minus 4 and u minus 1. So that means u equals secant squared of x. So that's going to be secant squared of x minus 4 and secant squared of x minus 1 equals 0. So that one is secant squared of x is going to end up equaling 4, square root both sides. So we get secant squared of x equals positive or negative 2. Now remember, secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So if I just flip the cosines, where the cosines are 1 half, if I flip those, so if cosine equals 1 half, secant is going to equal 2 over 1, which is 2. So I really just need to look at where's cosine 1 half. Well, cosine is one half at these two places, so that's going to be four square or four pi over three and five pi over three. Okay, let's do the same with this. So secant squared of x minus one, add the one square root, and you get plus or minus one. So, well, wherever cosine is plus or minus one, secant is going to be plus or minus one. So that is pi and two pi. So then our answer is x equals pi, 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3, and 2 pi. Cool? Goodbye. <laughs> that was weird. Bye.